What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today I'm gonna to be unboxing the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air and comparing it to the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip. There's a $700 difference between the two so I really wanna see if it's worth it to go with the MacBook Air and save some money or if you should spend more and go with the MacBook Pro. So we're gonna kinda of answer those questions throughout this video. So as you can see from the box, I did get the midnight color. It's not usually my preferred color with MacBooks just because it does kind of show a lot of smudging and scratches, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. So you can see I got the eight gigabytes of RAM and the 256 gigabyte SSD. Again, this is the base model. You can pay 200 additional dollars to double the RAM and also to double the SSD. So let's go ahead and use these peel tabs. And right up top we have our MacBook Pro. And this is the main reason I went with the midnight color. It's because of the charging cable, the color matching charging cable just looks so awesome in this midnight color. It's like a really dark gray and I think it looks sick. Now, one thing to note here is I did go with the 35 watt dual charging adapter. So you will see in here, if I take the block out, we have two ports on here. So this is going to be only 35 watts. Now you can upgrade this to 70 watts. It's not really an upgrade, it's a choice because it is a free upgrade. So you can either do the dual port 35 watts or you can choose the 70 watt fast charger, which I would recommend for most people to go with the 70 watt just because it's gonna charge your MacBook much faster, but I just did the dual uh, charger here just because I don't have that one yet. And then also in the box, we do have our pamphlet with our Apple stickers, and this material is new. So whatever they put the stickers on this year, that's how you know I've unboxed too many Apple products, but I could tell that the material that they've attached these stickers to is a little bit different. All right, so now for the main attraction. And man, this black is just so beautiful. And I'm gonna cherish this while I can because I know there are gonna be fingerprints galore after I start using this. I can already start to see some. So that is going to be the big downside of getting this midnight color, but man, does it look good. Let's open it up for the first time. And there's what we have for our trackpad and keyboard on this 15 inch MacBook Air. We'll go ahead and take this off the screen. Beautiful, so satisfying as always. All right, so right away, I am obsessed with this screen. Like I'm a big fan of big screens on MacBooks, but not with the added bulk. And that's always kind of been the hidden gap in Apple's Mac lineup. There's really never been a MacBook that had a big screen while also remaining lightweight and portable and something you can travel with easily. And that's where I think the MacBook Air really fills that gap in the market. And that's a big reason I think this is going to be a very successful product. And I may end up switching out my MacBook Pro for this MacBook Air. I'll talk more about that near the end of this video. But anyway, this is a 15.3 inch liquid retina display and it has a sustained 500 nits of brightness. Meanwhile, the MacBook Pro has a 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display with 1000 nits of brightness with a peak of 1600 nits while watching HDR content. Now also keep in mind that we have the 120 Hertz ProMotion display on the MacBook Pro. So the display on the MacBook Pro is better in pretty much every way. But you're really only gonna notice the difference if you're either A, outside under direct sunlight a lot, or B, if you're doing color correcting while video editing. If you're not doing either one of those two things, the difference is not gonna be worth the price. So one of the first things I was curious about when buying the 15 inch MacBook Air is how much lighter is it actually going to be compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro? Because there's only a 0.2 pound difference. So very minor difference. And when holding them, it, you can feel the difference, like the MacBook Air definitely feels lighter, especially when you've been holding it for quite a while. You can really tell the difference that the MacBook Air is lighter, but it is also a little bit longer. So like if you have these side by side, you can see that the MacBook Air is just a little bit longer in terms of like the height compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. But when you look at the thickness, you can see just how much more thin the MacBook Air is. Now I will say that there is a difference in the keyboard here as well. And this is really going to come down to personal preference. But for me, I like typing on the MacBook Air better. Like I can already tell just from using these for a very short amount of time. And it's just the, the overall design of the MacBook Air. You can kind of put your palms down and they don't stick up as much. It's, it's really hard to tell unless you're using it, but I've noticed that on the MacBook Pro, it just does not feel as good when typing as it does on the MacBook Air. Your, your palms are kind of closer to 
the desk, if that makes sense, while you're typing, whereas they're kind of raised more on the MacBook Pro. And that of course is due to the thickness, but you can tell a difference when typing. One other thing to note here about the keyboard and trackpad is that the trackpad is bigger on the 15 inch MacBook Air compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Also the little slit down here at the bottom is thicker and kind of wider than it is on the MacBook Air. You'll also notice that we do not have these speakers on top. Like on the MacBook Pro, we have these speakers on the top, whereas we do not have anything on the MacBook Air. It's just a fully flush look. Now, one of the biggest differences between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro is that the MacBook Air has a completely fanless design. There is no fan inside of the MacBook Air, whereas on the MacBook Pro, I was you know, immediately reminded that we have fans when I was running my Geekbench test because the fans went crazy, the MacBook Pro got very hot, whereas the MacBook Air remained cool, and of course I didn't hear any fans, it was very silent. So that's something that I really love, especially if you're traveling with a MacBook and you always have it on your lap, you're not gonna get your legs burn off by the fans and just all the heat that comes from the MacBook Pro because that's of course powering all of the intensive tasks that the MacBook Pro can handle compared to, you know, you can't really do as intensive of tasks on the MacBook Air. But if you look at the actual specs, you will notice that we have a 10 core GPU versus a 16 core GPU on the MacBook Pro, and the MacBook Air is actually unbend this time. So the 13 inch model was bend and it had an eight core GPU. So now it's fully unbend with that 10 core. And as far as the CPU goes, we have an eight core CPU versus a 10 core CPU. And if you're wondering how this fares in benchmark testing, you can see the scores right here. So in the Geekbench score, I actually did a Geekbench 6 test. There's really not that big of a difference. We scored a 2577 on the single core versus a 2697 on the MacBook Pro, and then a 10029 versus a 12423. So really not a big difference. Now, where you start to see the big difference is in the disk speed test. So you can see we got a 1643 on the write speeds for the MacBook Air and a 1528 on the read speeds. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, we pretty much doubled in both write and read. And one thing to note here is that the 512 gigabyte model of the MacBook Air will have faster SSD speeds when it comes to transferring, like reading and writing. So this is just the base model score. So if you spend that extra $200, you will definitely have scores closer to what you see on the MacBook Pro. And I may actually test that out in a future video. So yeah, these disk speeds and you know these read and write speeds will only matter if you're transferring a lot of files, like maybe from an SSD to your computer or vice versa, or if you're just doing a lot of just file transfer in general. But if you're not doing that very often, this is really not gonna make a big difference. Then the final test I wanted to show you is the Cinebench test. So we ran a Cinebench test for the CPU, and you can see we scored an 8301 versus an 11816. And then on the single core here, we had a 1589 on the MacBook Air versus a 1657 on the MacBook Pro. And you can see the ratio there, 5.23 versus 7.13. So we obviously knew that the MacBook Pro was gonna be quicker, but I honestly, I don't know why, but I thought the scores would be a much bigger difference, like especially with the single core here. Like it's very close, 1657 versus 1589 is very close. So, you know, the MacBook Air is gonna handle tasks just fine if you're doing a lot of light work on your MacBook. I should also mention that the 15 inch MacBook Air now has two additional speakers over the previous 13 inch model. So we now have a six speaker sound system with force canceling woofers, which is the same as in the MacBook Pro, but Apple mentions that the MacBook Pro has high fidelity speakers. So let's see if there's a difference. Okay, so I could tell a little bit of a difference. It does seem like the music and the bass is a little bit deeper on the MacBook Pro, but really it's not that big of a difference. So something I thought was not gonna be really anything to mention in this video turned out to be something I need to mention because the Wi-Fi speeds on the MacBook Pro are actually faster than the MacBook Air. And I don't know if it's because we have Wi-Fi 6E support in the MacBook Pro versus Wi-Fi 6 in the MacBook Air, but I only have a Wi-Fi 6 router, so I'm not even taking advantage of Wi-Fi 6E, but the speeds still seem faster on the MacBook Pro. So that's something to note. And just take a look at these screens right here. 
here, you can really see a difference in how much you can fit on the 15 inch MacBook Air screen versus the 14 inch MacBook screen. It's really quite a bit different for you know what seems like such a small size difference. Now, when it comes to battery life, we have up to 15 hours of wireless web surfing on the MacBook Air versus only 12 hours on the MacBook Pro. So you are going to get three additional hours while web browsing on the MacBook Air, which is a pretty big difference. Now, Apple does claim that this 15 inch MacBook Air has the same 18 hour battery life as the 13 inch MacBook Air with M2, but I think that we might actually get better battery life because we do have a 20 plus percent larger battery inside of the MacBook Air. So I'll have to do some more real world testing with this MacBook Air and I will kind of follow up on that in my full review. All right, so let's wrap everything up. So we have a $700 difference between the MacBook Air and the M2 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch, both base models. and. You know, I think if you're even comparing these two to begin with, you probably do some type of creative work. Otherwise, just get the MacBook Air. Like if you don't do any video editing, any photo editing, anything super intensive, get the MacBook Air and you know, thanks for watching the video. You don't need the MacBook Pro. So I think that if you're watching this video though, you probably do some type of creative work. And so it really comes down to how intensive is your workflow? Because I really think that the base model 15 inch MacBook Air is going to suffice for most people. Now, if you do a lot of creative work, you know, you might see yourself upgrading the MacBook Air to 16 gigs of RAM, which is an extra $200. And then you might upgrade the storage to 512 gigs of SSD storage. That's another $200. Now, all of a sudden, you're only $300 off the MacBook Pro. And in that case, if you're planning on doing that, I would just spend the extra money and go with the MacBook Pro. But if you're somebody who wants a more lightweight MacBook that doesn't need all of the Pro performance, like if you don't do super intensive video editing, if you don't do super intensive coding, if you don't do super intensive 3D modeling or, or photo editing, then the MacBook Air is going to be great for you, especially with that fanless design. So you're not gonna hear anything. It's not gonna heat up as much as the MacBook Pro. The typing experience, in my opinion, is better on the MacBook Air. So that could be important if you're doing things like you know browsing the web a lot or taking notes or having this for college or high school. So I think that the 15 inch MacBook Air is going to be an excellent seller just because of the void that it fills in Apple's MacBook market where we could not buy anything over a 13 inch MacBook without spending 2000 plus dollars for MacBook Pro prices. So now that you can get a 15 inch MacBook Air for much less than $2,000, it's gonna be a hot seller. Now, the last thing I will say about upgrading the MacBook Air, if you do not want the base model, if you're kind of in the middle of being like somebody who does intensive tasks versus you know doing leisurely things on it, I think if you're gonna spend money on any upgrade, you should go ahead and do the storage upgrade to 512 gigabytes. And the reason I say that is because you will get the faster transfer speed. So if you're transferring files from an SSD to your computer or vice versa, like I mentioned earlier, that will be much faster with 512 gigabytes of storage. Now I say that, and you know, you're probably thinking, well, eight gigabytes of RAM, that's not a lot. I want 16. But again, if you're spending that money on the RAM and the SSD, you're gonna be in MacBook Pro territory. So I think you should choose one or the other. And if I had to choose one personally, I would choose the storage, but it really comes down to what you do and what you value on your MacBook. I think you should only go with RAM if you really run a ton of applications at once. Like if you have 50 tabs open at all times, go with the RAM upgrade. That's gonna make more sense for you. But if you're somebody who does not have a ton of applications always opened, then you should go ahead and do the storage upgrade for faster transfer speeds. So I hope this video helped you out comparing the 15 inch MacBook Air and the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro. So I will have more videos coming on the 15 inch MacBook Air. And let me know in a comment down below if you would like to see anything else compared here on the channel. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate Appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more MacBook and, of course, iPhone and iOS content as well. But, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.